everyone on this fourth Sunday of Advent. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord is God, and they shall remain from now, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me, and holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, Sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of judah where she entered the house of zechariah and greeted elizabeth when elizabeth heard mary's greeting the infant leaped in her womb and elizabeth filled with the holy spirit cried out in a loud voice and said Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first two chapters in Luke's Gospel, St. Luke tells us that there are seven individuals that were filled with the Holy Spirit. They had John the Baptist, his mother and father, Elizabeth and Zechariah, Mary and Jesus, and then Anna and Simeon. Now, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? It means to be filled with the power of God, of God's life itself to be filled with this this gift of grace. And being filled with that gift of grace enables them to do what it was that God was calling them to do. I find it astounding that the very first person to be filled with the Holy Spirit in Luke's Gospel was St. John the Baptist when he was in the womb of his mother, Elizabeth. Now here we live in this society that's very confused about when life begins, especially in the state of New York. But St. Luke points out to us that it is God who has revealed that, that he is the one, through the power of grace, that gives dignity, value, and, and worth to every human being at the moment of conception. And it was John the Baptist filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb. And because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was able to recognize the voice of God so that when Mary greeted Elizabeth, he leaped in Elizabeth's womb for joy. Now that's a sonogram I would like to see. I have no idea what it would look like to have John the Baptist leaping in Elizabeth's womb for joy. 
So what does this gospel mean for us? Well, it means that, that we too have that opportunity to be filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the power of God, the life of God himself. And being filled with the Holy Spirit, it is then that we are able to discern God's will and we have the strength and the courage to go forth and do it, to be those individuals that God is calling us to be in the society in which we live. So as we prepare to celebrate the birth of our Savior on Christmas Day, here on this, this fourth Sunday of Advent, we are called to be open to this power of the Holy Spirit so that we too may be filled with this gift of grace, so that we too can do what God is calling us to do, to be the men and women and children that God is calling us to be. Together, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Advent, we bring our prayers and petitions before our loving and merciful God. For God's church on earth, may the Holy Spirit grant us strength and joy as we share the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all seminarians, especially those of our diocese, as they prepare for a lifetime of service in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected leaders, may God grant them understanding and courage for sowing unity rather than division. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all expectant parents and their unborn children, may God grant health and wellness to mother and child. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing difficulties as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, may God's peace and grace ease their burden. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our diocesan community of faith, may God help us to support and uplift one another in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may God grant them everlasting joy and peace in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, we are confident that you hear and answer all of our prayers. Unite what we ask for this morning with all the cries of our brothers and sisters. We ask this, as we ask all things through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, O Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophet foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of the Nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under under my roof, but only say the word, my and my soul shall be. shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever near, so we may press forward all the more eagerly 
So, to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Come from.